got going on here. So we indeed, indeed start as a Count Odo of Anjou, a Count of Anjou. He did start, I think, with three counties, which is an interesting contrast from CK2. In CK2, same year, he started with one. In CK2, he's 15 years old. In CK3, he's 10. Again, different sources and trying to track down these old timelines and they're trying to refine things and you know, you're having to pick and choose which source you sort of use. So we started as a 10 year old count and since then we have expanded quite a bit. Now, in real life, our character would A, have been king by now, B, dead. So depending on your metrics, we're either doing slightly worse or slightly better than than real life. Uh, but you know, RNG going to be RNG at some point, and we still we still don't know. It may have been cleared up at this point, or maybe because I was on pre-release version of things of the game. We did lose some counties in a way that doesn't feel like we should have lost counties because we weren't in any war or anything like that. There was something. There was definitely something weird that happened. Doesn't mean that there wasn't a legitimate explanation, but there was definitely something weird, and we lost, um, and we lost some more counties, including the actual county of Anjou, which did slow us down a little bit, but we've rebuilt since then. Okay, let's read some uh, whiskey and chocolate contributions here. Uh, first, there was Cool Man Chaos. Thank you very much, Cool Man. Always around in the channel. Always a who. Oh, it was your birthday yesterday too. You're 28 years old. You made a leek and bacon pie. Now that, yeah, yeah. That that sounds delicious. That sounds really good. You just got money for your birthday, guess. Well, uh, Kuman, uh, happy birthday, and I hope you had a good one, and uh, many more to come. And uh, Wiggles for life. Thank you. Um, that is <laughs> definitely not a bribe to play as whales someday. No, sir, not a bribe. Well, shit. Thank you. Um, that is incredibly generous. Uh, thank you, and thank you everyone who keeps making this channel exist. I still, I, I, it's, again, I've said it before and I'll say it again, I never want to put too much thought into this because I'm afraid the magic will just break. It's like when you realize you're dreaming and then you wake up. So, it, I, I, it's better for me not to analyze how this is a thing. But it's a thing because of you guys, and, and thank you very much for that. And definitely not a bribe, huh? Hi. Right. We'll see what we can do. We'll see what we can do. I was thinking maybe doing a campaign um, down here because there's some really interesting things in this area. But now, I don't know. Now we may have to go whales watching. Or maybe we can just conquer whales. Maybe we should just become Welsh. I mean, it's on our way. If we wanted to do sort of air to air. Oh, the kingdom of air doesn't exist anymore. But uh, the province was somewhere around here. Um... Whales would be right there. I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. Um, what was the... There was one more thing I was going to say, and now I don't remember. Dun, 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 dun. Um, uh, Nair, I'm actually not sure about the achievement. I didn't realize, first of all, that there was an achievement uh, for for Odo um, and the Capets and things like that. Uh, and again, I started in pre-release version, so I wouldn't have been eligible for... Um, achievements anyway, probably, and I'm not playing on Iron Man, uh, because I didn't know if there were going to be any technical issues. Air was a little to the right. Oh! Mmm, yeah, but... Oh, no, there it is! Okay, there's the actual province of Air. Oh, that makes sense! You know what? Because, like, I know that Air is near this little corner, and I think I was thinking, like, this or that was, was this sort of little corner, this little gulf over here. The Gulf of Guinea, I suppose. I was sort of interpreting as here, so I'm like, eh, Air must be over here, right? Okay, no, nah, that's fine. You guys know I'm blind. It's all good, right? It's all good. There's an achievement starting as one of these to become king of France. Well, it must... Okay, it must be this guy. It must be this guy because this is the guy who historically became the king of France. I mean, it's he was elected the that. king of France after, like, defending Paris against Vikings or something like that. I can't remember what, what the story is. So, um, and literally elected, which I don't think elective um, succession is a thing here, but we'll see. Hey, Mr. Brightside! Ooh, get yourself some nice Swiss chocolate. I do have some Swiss chocolate upstairs. With um with little slivered almonds inside, which I do like a lot. Anyway, we're about ready to start. However, before we do, there's something I want to address. Um, is that our heir, so our son died. So our current heir is our grandson. Which is a shame. At first I was excited, sort of excited when our son died. Because I thought it would mean we would get to inherit as one of our daughters, who are all super brilliant. Every single one of my daughters, if I recall correctly, 
was um, was quite smart. In fact, I think the third one, Mike the Girl here, is an actual genius. Um, Last Revenant was not, but he was quick, actually. He still had one trait of it, which was okay. Unfortunately, his son does not have any genetic traits whatsoever, which is a bit unfortunate. And just because of the way the succession is shook out, we are going to be taking over as our grandson, who we're educating. Now, he did develop the Curious Childhood trait, um, which means he would excel at either a dipl diplomatic or a education, uh, learning education. So either diplomacy or learning as a focus. And I asked on Twitter which way people would go. And a lot of people actually thought they wanted to see learning. I think possibly not a lot of people have looked at, into learning very much um, in other streams and things like that. It might not be quite as popular. The other thing that's interesting with learning, if we take a look here, there's really, well, I mean, just like any one of these focuses, there's three different trees. But you can sort of think of it, in my opinion, almost like... Um, two different styles either either we go and we really le lean into the religious aspect and go theologian or maybe something else what i like about scholar is that it really boosts um so cultural fascination for teching up i'm not sure this will help us because we're not actually the um the head of our culture we're not the head of our culture someone else is although potentially we might become because it's, you know maybe we'll become important enough um improving the development counties is really nice because development is basically leads to tech which is kind of beautiful um and i mean the entire vibe of the scholar tree is very cool again we get more development growth as well here um tons of uh, just learning sitting in there and that might be kind of nice whole of body um is actually pretty substantial like it doesn't necessarily give you the same pure stat boosts but what it does is it gives you a tremendous amount of bonus health which means you're likely to live a lot longer you also get a few there's there's at least two maybe three different um uh stress reducers in here as well which is kind of nice over on the diplomatic side uh we've got a few different vibes if we if we knew we could take over as our grandson quickly enough Family hierarchy is nice. If you can get this as early as possible, it's wonderful because when you get it, your children get extra uh, stat points. Um, it uh, increases your family power, but also um, the more children you have give you more skill points. And then the patriarch one um, doesn't it give us something else. It does give us more fertility. The thing is, it possibly by the time you get there, you don't need the extra fertility anymore, but it might be nice to get extra stat points for more of our kids. On the other hand, uh, something like Diplomat and August and things like this really help with a lot of stats. So, I, I think it's all pretty good. Two perks in learning gets you restraint, which lets you turn off the baby factory once you have an heir and a spare. Oh, right over here, yeah, because we can embrace celibacy. That is true. The extra skill points for children get added even after after the perk is chosen and the children's already born. Uh, that, and, okay, that's what I thought but i wasn't sure so you're saying both group uh, sound foundation definitely works because this to me just says you get a random skill point for every child you have living groom to rule when you click this it gives you this either your children's skill points at that point plus any future children that is pretty good then you don't have to necessarily rush it so anyway question still remains speak now diplomacy versus learning i i think we might go learning You started with celibacy with your first uh, character. You had seven seven children or so because you had a fecund spouse. Wow. Everyone wants learning. Everyone likes the smarts. Oh, okay. I'm like, it's not highlighting. But, no, no. I see. Bam. All right. So he's going to study that, and hopefully it'll work out. I mean, if he had the intelligent trait or something like that, it might be more there. But, I mean, you know, most of the people in his family are smart, and maybe we can, uh, you know, encourage him that way. Maybe that's the vibe we're going for. I don't know. We got some more whiskey and chocolate. Yeah. It's sexy Flanders! Ha <laughs> ha! Stupid sexy chocolate. Flanders. Uh, thank you very much for that. It says, love the content. Keep up the great work. Thank you. And you and Hugh's army! I've been loving CK3 so far. I wanted to try CK2, but thought the learning curve was too steep. This looks the best. I also studied medieval early modern history. So it's an educational purchase, right? Exactly. You can write it off on your taxes, man. That's what I do for my video games. Doesn't everyone write off their video games on their taxes? No? Just me? You saying I have kind of a stupid life? Maybe I do. Um, currently watching from my phone on a train. Oh, cool. Choo-choo. Only thing I like better than, you know, medieval simulating games is train games. All right. Let's uh, unpause. 
We can go to war. We can pilgrimage. We can hunt. Our stress level is non-existent, which is kind of amazing. The last couple of characters I've played were shy and... Well, I guess this guy is shy, which is hard. Um, but in the multiplayer game, I had a character who was paranoid. It doubles the stress from everything. Ah, so harsh. So harsh. All right, just unpausing for now. I would love to declare war on Visby. The problem with that is that they still have some extra people over here. Now, okay, one of the things when we've looked at the declare war, it's holy war. And the, oh, inferior. Hold on. Also, more whiskey and chocolate. Ooh, just a bribe in leek and bacon pies for playing nations. Uh, we are doing gorse. That's good worse together. Good worse. Worse. Um, I didn't realize they were such in a vulnerable state right now. Now, I could do a holy war for a county. I was going to say, change objective. No, there's only the one. Or a duchy, which costs more. But So there's no reason for me to go holy war for a duchy, because it's only one county anyway. So I should holy war for the county. Do that. Um, he does potentially have some allies, but they're not very strong anyway. We have enough troops as is. We can raise 2,300 troops just by itself. Yeah, no, it's fine. And I mean, I can call in allies should something happen. But... Is there a reason we didn't start this war last episode? I don't know. It's interesting they decide to go at the sea right away. Oh, Righteous Fury, thank you! Got a promotion at work recently and want to spread the love. Thank you for all the YouTube content that gets me through the longer work days. All these people cheating on their work by watching YouTube videos. I didn't do that all the time. Hang on. Are you... Oh, I can still desiege it. Right, okay. So one of the things that's a little bit confusing in Crusader Kings 3, um, if you have you like if you played literally any other Paradox game, this works differently than in previous versions. If you're so if I've declared war against Visby, but it turns out um, that he was all hang on. He was already in a war. In fact, he's in several wars. I am also, therefore, hostile to everyone else who's in a war against Visby. Which is a little bit confusing, because you've got uh, people who would otherwise be, you know, chill. Maybe even an ally in some context. Um, your forces will now be hostile, because you're sort of fighting over the same land. So some of these ar enemy armies that we're seeing around could be someone else that Visby's in a war with. That was especially evident when we were doing multiplayer um, on a Kiss for Lux channel. And two of us, because we're playing in Iberia, two of us were in war against the same person. Our troops could fight each other. We could also cancel each other's siege. So we had to be a little bit careful about what was going on. It's like, I can see why. Because not being able to take over other sieges sometimes is really awkward in previous, in Crusader Kings 2, in Europa Universalis 4, for example. Um, on the other hand, it's like, does it make sense that you should be able to? I'm not sure. Vermin invested, infested several granaries in the county of Vanes, Vaughn, destroying the seed grain stored in them. With nothing to plant for the next year's crops, the free tenants living there have come asking me for aid. Given the dire situation, these farmers will ultimately be forced to accept whatever terms I offer. Right. What is your control right now? Oh, it's only 36. I would love to boost the control. It will lower popular opinion, which could lead to more rebellions, which isn't helped by the fact that they're both Norse and non-Catholic take pity on them we could spend a bunch of money we'd gain piety and we'd improve popular opinion or command the priests lose piety so either okay i could either lose 55 gold and gain 50 piety so this is a 100 piety swing but a 55 gold difference or i can take this option which will upset people would give me more control i mean long-term control is good but it's going to increase by itself and i can always deploy my marshal there um this is a very, it, it's interesting, this decision, because it's very, it feels very marginal which, between these. I think it's going to be very situational. I don't think there's a clear, better pick, and it's really going to depend on, well, what exactly are we looking to do at this point? Um, I think I'm probably going to lead towards just ha spending the piety. So we'll improve the popular opinion, which will help not get rebellion here, and that's going to be okay. I'm still grieving. That's right! That's right, I forgot, at the end of the stream, we are currently grieving, and we feel it's important to be a little kinder. I mean, no matter what, we're gonna we're gonna make sure no one starves to death. It's just a question of, like, how we're gonna go about things. None, none of these are mean, really. 
I mean, I suppose this might be the meanest because I'm basically holding them hostage. Oh, you want to eat? Bend the knee. So either one of these two. I mean, this the take pity, I suppose, is the absolute kindest one. I do have a lot of money. You know what? Let's be fully nice. Done. Oh, we got a lot of modifiers. Grateful, pacified, local cattle herd. Ooh, for development growth, that is actually quite spiffy. All right, we're sieging things out over here. Someone's got a claim there. I mean, we could consider fabricating some claims at some point. All dynasty members into my war. No need to do that. We don't need a hunt. We don't need allies. Everything is good. We'll just finish the siege now in a second at any cost. Oh, we can sell titles. I'm not going to sell titles, but I'm excited to get Avaricious, which should give us a ton of extra money. Even though it feels like a, it could be a sin. All right, 52% war score. So we're also at war. Like We're still at war with Visby over here. We could go and try to siege that out. Um, maybe I will. Well, hold on. Pause. 23 gold to get onto ships. There could be an army sitting there that we'd have to fight, and not necessarily an army we care about fighting. Now, I'll, I'll go. I'll go. We'll get on the boats. I know, like, lack of, like, raising actual galleys is, is less realistic, but my god, I appreciate the reduced micromanagement. Oh, so much. I was saying large cattle herd. Yeah, right over here. Are they landing back over here? Is it possible? It's possible. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna watch very carefully. Once we land and does oh, there's the 2K army. They're probably coming back to re-siege. So with that in mind, you know what we should do? Uh, we've got the siege weapons. I'm gonna go and increase. Um, go and hit this one more time. There we go. We're gonna have size three of our siege uh, men at arms. I mean, I don't think we'll get the benefit to it until it uh, it actually builds up. But going forward, I think it's gonna be. I really like the increased siege speed. Oh, I was saying local cattle herd as opposed to large. Oh, okay. Oh. She's sitting on a 1.0? But we already... We had some... Some of these, didn't we? How come it's not giving me the 0.03 from the one I did have? Are they not with us for some reason? Yeah, see, they're, they're going to try to take over the siege. We might beat them to it. That'll give us 100, and then we can peace out. Means more realistic. Most naval transports are just hiring local ships. And that's what I thought, too. Like, you're just going, like... Sorry, fishermen. We need your boats. This is before the era of actual proper navies. Well, no, that's not true. Some of that did happen, but... Oh God, they're going to win the siege first. This is turning into an annoying tug-of-war game. They might be coming here. Should I just stay here for a sec and, like, they can land on me and I'll just boop them? No. I'm gonna come back over here because we're, we're short on supply over there anyway. I mean, we're not out yet, but we'll see. Hey, Quill, what is better to learn? C or just JavaScript? Uh, what's best to learn is programming. Language is something you're gonna by the time you know if you get a career in this you're gonna have to be learning like a new language every couple of years <sighs> gilbert the guy who at first i was bitter about the fact that he somehow was given the county of anjou for some reason because the king i had the county then the king gained the county and then he gave it to Gilbert. And at first I was going to plot to kill him. And then we became best friends. <laughs> it's like, sorry, I, I was I was plotting to murder you. It was, it was just a prank, bro. Oh, Gilbert. We're a little stressy. Now we are in an interesting situation with Anjou. Because you see... Oh, no. Really? Because my daughter is married to the brother... Of the Count of Anjou. So Count Francois here is the son of Gilbert. He has a brother, also called Gilbert, that my daughter married matrilineally. Unfortunately, he has a daughter which is there. But if we boop her first... Well, he might have more kids. It might be easier. We boop him and then boop her. And then it would go to him. How, how boopable is this guy? Not very boopable. You know what? Again, we're double grieving now. 
how bad do we want to be? How, how easy would it be to kill the kid? Out of curiosity. Yeah, still not that great. Um, I mean, we're not the most spy. We have only a five there. And if we look at our council, our spy master, she is pretty good in 18. But yeah. Uh, Gilbert was our fantastic chancellor. Unfortunately, he's not there anymore. Now, his son is a powerful vassal and would like a position. He's only a 10. Whereas Pascalis over here is a 22. He's not one of my, um, he's not one of my powerful vassals. He's not a vassal at all. He's just a knight. But I think we're going to grab him. He's so much better. We could change her wife to just boost spying. That's true. Because right now she's giving us more whiskey and chocolate. One second. One second. Um, so you get more points in total if she's just on assist. But you could get more points in the category if you had her focus there. If we had her focus on court intrigue, we'd get eight intrigue instead of three. So we'd get five more intrigue, but at a cost of nine points in total. I, I, I predict I will probably use this more often when we get into domain limits. You know, have her switch to stewardship temporarily to increase the limit if we need something. I don't think it would make enough of a difference here on the intrigue side. So we'll probably have to wait for that. Thank you very much, the Pope, for giving me some the money, which I like. We'll probably uh, start building some more buildings in our domain after this is done. Although, were we still sort of debating where our, our capital might stick around? I'd really like to retake Anjou. I guess one of the ideas was um, probably for the Duchy of Brittany, which is big and we're going to keep. It's du jour capital is vain. I don't know if it matters if we keep that or not. Okay, they haven't gone here. They might... The war that... Um, the people who are fighting Visby are in might include other um, alliances. So you can see these guys are, are leaving somewhere else, which is good. They're not re-sieging um, Faman over here. I think that's going to be okay. Hi, Quote, what's your favorite Paradox name? That is so hard to answer. The easiest thing to say, I suppose, would be I have the most hours in EU4. And for me, I, I compare every Paradox game that's come out, I've said, I've compared to EU4. Your liege won their war with Duke... What? No way, really? My king was warring for my claim. On apparently I had a claim somehow on the county of uh Sarbrücken over here and my liege fought a war for it. Now, I could go and boost my stewardship here to get an increased domain. Um, but the thing is, I'm pro I'm going to get Visby in here in a sec. Or, sorry, it's not Visby. It's uh, Lorient. No, sorry. It's uh, uh, Cornat. I can't see it with the army anyway. Cornel? Anyway. Um, so, if I'm going to boost my stewardship, it's probably going to do that. I think we probably give this away. And I think what we do... We could give it to another family member, actually. That's probably the best. What I was thinking is it might be nice to give it to my steward, my chancellor. Assuming he wouldn't leave my court, and he shouldn't because he would still be a direct vassal of mine. This way, um, he like he, he's already got a position in my council. If he happened to become a powerful vassal, that would be fine, right? At least you only did that to get you a hook. I mean, maybe, but honestly, I owe him. Um, where's this grandson? That might be nice. What do you think? Keep him in the family first? Is this guy orthodox? Oh, he is. I wonder if I can get him to convert. Let's keep him in the family first. So, Nicolas Capet, who's... Is it spineless planner? You know what? That's okay. So, he's the son of Zeleth, who's my spy master, actually. Um, and my daughter. Family first. And he's intelligent and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll go ahead and do that. So, let me give you a title over here. Bam. Okay. And yet, because he's family, I automatically got a hook on him, which means I could raise one of his obligations. Um, I really like to prefer raising taxes. Although, hmm, interesting. Going with the, um, going with the levy earns a 6% increase versus only a 2.7% increase. But, I mean, taxes, right? I love gold. Money's pretty. It's just so convenient.
Yeah, we'll go with money. He doesn't love money. I guess either way, he doesn't have a whole heck of a lot going on here. Um, just leave it dudes broke. Well, I mean, he'll get some money at some point. He's got a whole county. Boom. Done. Uh, okay, we're good here. I don't currently want to create a duchy. 